All right, so I have Jared here again with me to talk about Moon Knight Episode 6, the final episode of Moon Knight, at least for now. Uh, hopefully we get a Season 2. I know there's a lot of uh, rumors, you know, of it not having a Season 2 because of Emmy consideration and them uh, putting it as, like, a limited series and stuff like that. So, But hopefully we'll see Moon Knight around again in the MCU. But I wanted to start off this episode um, just talking about... I would say the hippo in the room. We'll just go with that because because <laughs> of Tawet. But um, I really wanted to start off actually with this episode. To me, I have a I have mixed feelings about it. And, and Jared, I'll get we'll get we'll kind of get into this. But um, I, as far as the episodes go, I, I think it was it was not my probably my least favorite episode, but it was kind of up there because I felt like and again we talked about this last episode. I felt it was a little rushed uh, because they had so much to tie up in forty five minutes or so. We'll we'll start off, I guess, with the way the episode began, which I really did like. I like that they picked up immediately after Mark got shot, and showed mm. everything from the perspective of what happened instead of it just jumping ahead. Like, okay, all this stuff happened off screen. So obviously, it shows you know, uh, Hero, you know, you know, putting the scarab on Mark's chest, and and he kind of there's a little Jake Lockley Easter egg in that where he talks about you know, you know, Mark Spector. Stephen Grant, whoever else you are or whoever else is inside you or whatever. I forget what the exact phrasing is on that scene, but I was like, okay, that's a cool little reference. And then obviously Layla being there. But as far as your overall thoughts for the episode, before we get into like spoiler territory and everything, uh, what were your thoughts on this episode? Mostly positive. Um, it, it gave me a lot of stuff that I did want, uh, but it also took away some things that I think I needed uh, to really, really love it. Uh it's probably like as far as the episodes go, like kind of mid ranking for me, uh, just because. But it's kind of a balance because like, oh, I got some of this, some really great stuff, but then there's like uh, some kind of dumb stuff too. So I think it just balances out to about an average episode. But the stuff, the stuff that wasn't there that I loved, I really loved. So you know, that yeah, and that's too. that's pretty much what I felt about the the whole series. And and one of the things I I've I've been speaking to other Moon Knight fans about like the expectations for the Moon Knight series and what you got based on what you thought you should need from a Moon Knight series. And like me personally, mm -hmm. if I was to headline a Moon Knight series, this was not the way I would have gone with a Moon Knight series. Not saying it's bad at all. It's a really, really good series. But the, I think, I think it, it, my opinion, I don't know if this was the route they were going, but I think, you know, getting really deep into the whole Egyptian gods and keeping it very kind of centered into that kind of lore was kind of Marvel's way of saying we don't want to do the whole I hate to say it Marvel's Batman you know because a lot yeah. of the early Moon Knight stories are a lot very very reminiscent to Batman you know it's very dark cities you know he's kind of you know taking care of the criminal underworld and stuff like that and I think that they were kind of going away like we want to do something way different than anything that's been done before which I can appreciate but um that's pretty much my opinion of the series as a whole kind of getting into it and after that scene uh with harrow and the very beginning of the episode with them kind of showing what happened to mark um we kind of go into a scene which i thought this was funny it was kind of the the tall th talking through the dead soldiers which was hilarious to me mm. <laughs> I, I really like that um i have a question for you and I, this is my opinion and, and we talked about it last episode i know you said one of the things that you were really happy about or that you really liked about the last episode was the moment when um when Mark is in front of the Conchu statue and he's dying, obviously, or about to kill himself. Yeah. And uh, he can't see Conchu until he gives Conchu his will to become Moon Knight, basically. He gives his, his entire will and then he shows up on screen and you were like, oh, I yeah. like that. What do you think, was it intentional or do you think it was an oversight or do you think it's just they were going with a different direction? Because Layla, when she's talking to Conchu, can obviously see him when she lets him go. Yeah. And, and and I was wondering if that was kind of like like my interpretation mm. of it is maybe because Mark is not lo no longer like alive at that point like when she resurrects Conchu so maybe it was like he's trying to get her to become his avatar obviously but that was kind of I I, I just wanted your thoughts on that actually I hadn't even thought about that being an inconsistency but now I do see it um I think on uh, the probably the most realistic reason for that happening is that they needed a visual representation that Kanchu had actually been freed. Uh, mm. Because it's right after she crushes his Ushapti that he's imprisoned in. Uh, and if... you know, they, they also need to let her know that it worked because 
if she can't see a direct result, then you know, how would she react? So I, I think they had to do that to make it make sense uh, right. in a way. Um, yeah, it, it is inconsistent. And uh, the, kind of the inconsistencies are one of the things that I do have in, like, a greater issue with the series as a whole. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I'm, I'm willing to let a lot of them slide just because I don't think they're like game breaking, uh, just a little annoying. Yeah, and that's that's something too with the um I think in general and, and this is a problem I have with all the Disney Plus MCU series except for really WandaVision, which I think was what mm-hmm. nine episodes. Was they yeah. all felt I mean six episodes is just too short to me if you're gonna try to tell a story, like a full story like this. It feels like the Marvel shows have been very okay, the first episode's a lot of setup of whatever they're going with, and then two and three are kind of like like your act the end of act one and then it's like four and five or act two and then it's like oh crap we have to finish this episode six is act three like we have to we have to like rush to the finish line and and that's something i don't know if it's just the way that they're they're planned or what but that's that's kind of the what i've gotten out of the mcu shows in general not that any of them are bad at, at any means but that's just kind of like I, I feel like six episodes just isn't enough especially for a new character like moon knight Hawkeye, it kind of works because you already know Hawkeye, you know his his story, you know. I mean, they were obviously introduced Kate Bishop and stuff, but it's for a character like Moon Knight, who's very complex. There's a lot of moving parts to his personality disorder, his, you know, his the whole Egyptian mythos and having Conchu and and all that. It's very, it's a it's something that's really hard to explain in six episodes. And I feel like that was the biggest complaint I probably would have a series as. And again, I, it's not a not that I don't like the series at all. I I loved it. Um, it, yeah. you know, some Moon Knight's better than no Moon Knight, in my opinion. So, <laughs> that, but, that's how uh, I feel. Yeah, yeah. But uh, also, too, when Mark ran back, and this is actually shocking, I didn't think we were going to see Steven in this episode. I thought that that was pretty much going to be the end of it, and maybe at the end you would see somehow Steven coming back oh, or, yeah. or whatever. Him rescuing Steven, kind of backtracking from the last episode, you know, he just decided, you know, no, I want to be one with Steven, and then it, that obviously balancing the scales, him, you know, kind of accepting Steven, I guess, and saying, you know, which I thought was a really great line where he's like, the only, the only true superpower I ever had was you. And that was mm-hmm. really awesome. And then it kind of opened the gates and everything. Um, is that, I mean, because I, I know we talked last week, you asked me my opinion on the balancing of the scales. Do you think that that's pretty much what they were going with? Is like they finally both kind of accepted each other and that became one? Yeah, that's, um, so the, the striking res- uh, symbolism in that was, the uh steven's heart is gone it's presumably still on the ship or whatever uh but mark has his and as he's turning the sand he like puts it into uh steven's hand and they're sharing it uh so i I think that is them like becoming one like they're not fighting against each other anymore they're in sync now and so yeah i think that is what the like that's a true balance of the scales uh, is them becoming one person and not like fighting for control over the body all the time. Yeah, and that's and you could obviously see that towards the end of the episode when um when Steve mm. when that the kind of great shot of Steven as Mister Knight kind of going through and just beating everybody's ass <laughs> like and, yes. and, and flipping like when a hero <laughs> shoots the like energy blast or whatever at him and he like does that flip I'm like okay that's cool they they finally he's kind of accepted the role and kind of they they're one in a way. Um, which yeah. I thought was really cool compared to in episode two, you know, where he didn't know what he was doing and he was kind of like bubbling along and kind of surviving, but obviously not a fighter. My other, the one thing I, and, and again, I don't want this to sound like I'm complaining about the episode because overall it was good. The one thing I didn't like, I was not a fan of the whole <laughs> Kanchu versus Amit Power Rangers battle slash Godzilla versus really? King Kong. I didn't like it. Oh. <laughs> I loved it. You liked it? Okay. See, that's (laughs) the thing is I'm hearing mixed reactions. I wasn't a huge fan of it. And I think that's just because, again, the whole, um, I don't know. I, I, I I liked the beginning of the battle when they were kind of like fighting inside of the, um, the tomb and, and, but, but when they started growing and doing all that, I felt, I was like, oh, it's a Gaijin battle in the middle of, um, of Egypt. But, uh, yeah, but, uh, you liked the, liked it. So what were your thoughts on that? Um, I, I just thought it was like big dumb fun like i didn't i didn't need any like special reason behind it or anything uh i i did kind of think it was weird that Kanchu was all of a sudden very big because amit it specifically shows her as she's eating souls she's getting bigger 
So that's like powering her up. Uh, but Kanji just gets big. And, like, there's no reason for it. It just happens. So that's one of the things I'm like, well, that's not really consistent. Uh, but I'm willing to let it slide because it's fun at least. Right. Yeah, that was. Um, it was, it, and I guess it was kind of. And I'll watch it again. I've only seen the episode once, and I'll have to. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll have to rewatch it again. But uh, and I haven't rewatched the series yet as a whole. Like I kind of want to do like a binge watch of the entire series, like in one sitting, and mm-hmm. just kind of see what that feels like as like a extended Moon Knight movie, kind of in a way. Yeah, but, that's um, what I'm doing tonight. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. That's awesome. And then Layla obviously becoming Talwet's avatar, which. Yeah, was was interesting, and I liked it. I actually really liked it, and I know uh, Christina, she was over the moon about it. But it was, um, mm. I know well, there's a lot of rumors going because they never really say, but that it's kind of like the MCU's version of Scarlet Scarab from the comics. Uh, they have confirmed it. They have uh, okay, it is the Scarlet Scarab, yeah. Okay, because I know that that's never mentioned in the episode, but I felt like I'm like mm. with her being Little Scarab was her nickname that her father gave her. And and all yeah. that, and you can also see the scarab on her on her outfit, which I thought was awesome. It, it gave me very mm. Wonder Womany vibes, like some of the moves and the way she was moving and stuff. Which I don't know why, but yeah, but I, I think thought... that was a pointed yeah thing that the director did because he had some uh he 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 did not care for Egypt's portrayal in Wonder Woman eighty four. Right. So I like a lot of this was like you know hey here hey look this is how you do it the right way, and I think this was just more of that because even like the gold on her. Costume is also kind of reminiscent of uh, Wonder Woman's uh, golden armor, right? From that movie, uh, but there's more references that are more things that lead into her becoming the Scarlet Scarab. So in the comics, the Scarlet Scarab's name was Abdul Fa- Faul. Okay. And okay. her her father's name is Abdullah El Fauli. So that's that's super close. Like I, I think they were trying to like give a hint that this was something that was coming without just blatantly telegraphing it by making it the same name, but it's, it's close enough where I think that was the point of it. See, and I, I didn't catch that reference, but also too, um, I know tower right when before, right before she takes over, uh, Layla as her avatar, she mm-hmm. mentions, you know, that she saw her dad and that, you know, in the field of reeds and all this. So I'm wondering if yeah. that was kind of a, a foreshadowing as well. Like it's kind of like, you know, he was maybe the Scarlet, scarab in a previous or or whatever and then you know passing on to her or whatever i don't know it could have been it could have been just nothing but that was awesome that's awesome i didn't know that that's pretty cool yeah well uh he uh layla had also given him a red scarf that had a scarab on it so scarlet scarab more like layers to the references oh that's cool okay yeah no see i Mm -hmm. didn't notice that as well yeah again with the there's so many easter eggs in the show too and it's it's hard to even keep up with with just yeah. everything. That's why I want to rewatch it as a whole, mm-hmm. all the way through. And then obviously the big fight scene at the end, which we all knew was coming. And we, I, I, we got more Moon Knight or and Mister Knight in this episode than the entire pro oh, series yeah. combined, um, which I thought was badass. Like the fight scene on the street, friggin' awesome. Like mm-hmm. I, they, they did a great job. I, I, I know a lot of people were complaining, at least on like Twitter and stuff that I follow, about the um, him flying, which I think was more of a reference to mm-hmm. him having like the moon copter in the comics like it kind of, you know because he because yeah i get it but obviously Kanshu was giving him the power to fly because he says it you know you you remember i'm the god of traveling or whatever he ma- he makes a comment right before yeah. that yeah he says he's the god of the night sky the night sky there you go and he flies off into the moon and then you know and then that which was awesome mm-hmm. as well and then he's like shooting across the sky which i was like okay that's pretty yeah. cool but um yeah that was one of the things i didn't like <laughs> you, know, you didn't like it so yeah see i didn't know because I, I was like okay that's very superman-ish but then i thought about it and i'm yeah. like oh, it's probably a reference to the moon cop because obviously in the comics the moon copter looks like a crescent moon and they probably were trying to go with something and yeah. i understand they're trying to get him from point a to point b in a in a really quick mm-hmm. amount of time but yeah no I, I i get the complaints on that too and i was like yeah the, the the biggest thing about that scene that annoyed me is that as he's flying there's kind of a jet noise that is happening in mm-hmm. the background as well and i'm like what is this supposed to be <laughs> like, is, does he have a rocket up his ass what's happening <laughs> Uh, <laughs> i mean that's possible like, just just put him in the moon copter just like they should have just put frenchie in the series and had that instead of oh we it's gonna make him fly uh i'll circle back around to that because it's part of a, a bigger argument uh complaint i have about the about the episode, the episode. but yeah that that also is to my the, the supernatural element of moon knight is part of the reason that stuff i didn't like about the series like um like to, since day one i wasn't a huge fan of mm-hmm. the whole him summoning his suit like an avatar and i kind of learned to live with it 
because obviously Kanchi is giving him the power. And I understand yeah. in the in the grand scheme of th- things, it's easier to have someone be able to summon a suit in reality as opposed to having to change into a suit, you know, based on how mm-hmm. the series was presented to us. But it's yeah. just one of my least favorite things. I wasn't a fan of the whole him ma- making him super like his eyes glowing at all times, yeah. which in some cases it's cool. In some scenes it's really cool. But then in other cases I'm like, there's a, there's a few things with that I'm not a fan of. Um, and then mm. I'm hoping that like in a season two, they can maybe scale back a little bit on and maybe make it more mm. like the older Moon Knight, you know, comics where it's not a, my, my issue with all MCU shows is, is this, the, um, the world ending consequences to everything. <laughs> like everybody's yes. deal, like, and that's my issue with this. It's like, obviously Amit, you know, but the whole like making Moon Knight fight gods or not, he didn't fight gods, <laughs> Kanchu fight gods, but having him. It's it's not it was just very not street level, which is Moon Knight's known for being a very street level superhero, you know, dealing with the underbelly of the Marvel Universe and stuff. Werewolves, vampires, criminals, you know, drug lords, stuff like that. I mean, he has yeah, you know, crime rings, crime, stuff like crime that. rings. Yeah, stuff like that. But he's not, you know, this isn't like his cup of tea as far as that. And I, I understand, you know, it's for television. They want to make it a big, big spectacle. But that's been my issue with like the MCU in general. It's like not everything needs to be world ending and like. Mm-hmm. the end of the world's happening so um what was yeah. your complaint you said you said you had something about that so uh jumping forward a little bit uh there there's the great fight scene with uh like moon knight layla and harrow uh and it kind of ends with mark on his back he's seemingly defeated and it seems like harrow is going to like succeed and then he blacks out and you know, some amount of time later wakes up and oh he, we we won it a lot of the this episode particularly and then a few other points in the show it feels like they kind of wrote themselves in the corners and just kind of tried to star trek their way out of it where they just made up some bullshit to get out of it and that's kind of how i feel about the flying they're like oh we'll mark so far away uh we'll make them fly it's fine right uh, not really you're just yeah. making shit up yeah you know, it would have been better if they I, just had, had Kanchu somehow transport him there, <laughs> you know, or something. But. Yeah, that would make more sense, honestly, than him being able to fly. We've already seen Kanchu teleport around, you know, as a like, little wind form. Like, yeah. why couldn't he just take Mark with him? At, at certain points in the show, it, it felt a little more natural, like the first time, uh, you know, quote-unquote Jake took over uh, when Mark wakes up and he's got the knife and the guy's gut in the third episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. That felt a little more organic because we're still like getting used to the personalities and how they switch back and forth and stuff but like for that to be how the final fight ends i think is cheap i i do feel cheated out of a real resolution for what was going on yeah i think uh, and i agree that th- this is actually something we're gonna definitely agree on that was my biggest complaint with this episode and probably the series as a whole is, and i know we talked about mm-hmm. it the, the 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 blacking out which i i now not 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 to end this like train of thought, but I do believe that Jake Lockley, obviously we know that it was Jake Lockley that he blacked out into and took out Harrow yeah. and all of his men. But I think pretty much throughout the series, like in the very first episode when he has a scarab and he kills all the people around him, that was, I think more, you're led to believe that was his Mark personality. I have a feeling yeah. that was actually Jake. The whole, the whole series, mm-hmm. every time that, that dark like blackout moment happens, I feel like is Jake Lockley in the cupcake truck when he has the gun and he kind of and he wakes up. That was uh, Jake. I, I, I'm starting to believe because that that was all Jake as opposed to it being Mark. And I think because if you notice, Mark and Steven, for the most part, they they communicate like through mirrors or whatever. And he doesn't really black okay. out. And that's kind of the 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 I, I'm starting because especially to the way the editing is. And I and after because I've watched the first episode like three or four times. But um, yeah, the 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 sound, I, I can't really replicate it but the sound that is made when he's blacking out that that, 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 that stuttery like, yeah yeah that, that only happens when he's blacking out and it happened during that last scene with harrow and he's like you said standing over him and about to, to kill him or whatever and then yeah. it, it, so it's like a jarring blackout as opposed to it being like more of a like and, and i think I, I don't know it's just every time every time that happened something around him had happened like people were dead yeah. around him he killed someone he had the gun in his hand which again mark probably used guns as a mercenary and stuff, but now looking obviously at the end credit scene, which we'll get to in a minute, um, mm-hmm. obviously, you know, that's kind of Jake's mm-hmm. 
thing using guns and stuff like yeah. that. So I'm I, I'm starting to believe that maybe throughout the whole series it was Jake in those situations. So counterpoint to that mm -hmm. in the pretty sure it's the third episode when they're actually in Egypt. Yeah. Um, and it's the rooftop fight, and it does the shuddery sound and the then the blackout, and then he wakes up in the cab. That was definitely Steven. Like oh yeah, Jake would have just murdered all of them on the rooftop. Uh, so that was definitely Steven taking that's back true. over. So that, uh, that's the only point where I can definitely say it wasn't. But I, I think there, there's a lot of stuff in the show that's kind of misdirects or it's supposed to make you question what's going on. So it's the point is to generate these kinds of kinds of conversations. And it did succeed in that. Yeah. Uh, the issue I'm having so to. Oh, well, maybe it was. Yeah. Is is not being able to like without them confirming there's going to be a, another season or more Moon Knight. Like it's kind of one of those yeah. things where it's like that's part of the reason, too, why I think like me and you both agree on being disappointed in that final battle of like if we knew there was going to be more or knew that they were going to get a resolution of some sort, it's kind of like, okay, maybe later they will show what exactly happened during that scene. But now it's like, we might not ever see that. We might not ever find out these questions or answering. It may not ever happen. I know um, uh, one of the writers for the show I don't know. in an interview yesterday um, made a comment saying, if there is a season two, if they were to do it, that they want to start off with it being focused on Jake Lockley, that that was, that's their goal. Um, so I know okay. So that would be a cool, I mean, I, I'd be okay with that because it'd be a very tonal different show as opposed to what we got this season with it starting with yeah. Stephen Grant, who's obviously the more quieter slash goofier, um, docile, if you will. Um, alter. Uh, he's straight up a pacifist. Like. Yeah, yeah, pacifist, <laughs> you know, hates conflict, everything. But then we get, obviously, which this was kind of cool. I like, I did like the, the last hospital scene, like when it goes into the asylum and then they're talking and then um, you see Harrow's bleeding and then he kind of, like yeah. falls back and he's back in his apartment. I was like, okay, that's kind of mm. cool of a way of ending that. Like you knowing, okay, it wasn't all in his head, but yeah. Or was it type deal? I mean, it kind of gets you to question that if you're not really mm. up on Moon Knight lore, but, <laughs> um, and then obviously the after credit scene, which uh, again, I know, I know you and I were uh, messaging back and forth and I kind of predicted it, but I kind of didn't. Cause I did in the first episode of the, of our little discussion with about Moon Knight, I was predicting that we might see Jake Lockley in like a post credit scene, which again, got that right. I did say it would probably be in like a cab, which again, wasn't completely right. It's a limo and that it would yeah, probably involve like Mark or Steven sitting in the back seat and then looking and see. So, so I kind of, I, I had the right type of type of scene, but not the right uh, participants in the scene, I guess, <laughs> and stuff. But um, I thought it was, that was actually probably my favorite part of the episode. And that's just because I, I mean, I guess for six episodes, we, we've been waiting for, Jake Lockley to actually show up and yeah. it it was cool I, I mean him I mean obviously he killed what a bunch of orderlies that were inside of the inside of the asylum which I saw the um the easter egg of um having uh Bill Sinkovich uh his uh name is on the actual that's the name of the hospital by the way yeah if you, if you go back and look which was really cool I thought that was pretty cool I'm not sure how I feel though about Conchu because he obviously he let he let Mark and Steven go. I put that in quotations for those that well you can't really see. Anyways. But um he let them go, you know, and free them from his presence, um, which obviously is not true. Kanchu, or as Hiro said, I think it was episode two. He always has a a another mission or another plan. You know, he's never <laughs> he's mm. never done with you. The I wasn't sure how I felt about that because it's like okay, he's like well I still have Jake, Lock you know, meet Jake Lockley, and then he obviously shoots Hiro yeah. at the end and. Which I, I mean, again, I thought it was cool. We got to see him, but I'm like, I'm kind of mixed bag. I do love the fact he was in the Mister Knight suit, like from the comics, from the newer comics. He's in his suit and everything, which I thought was really cool. But um, what were your thoughts on the end credit scene? I, I kind of have mixed feelings about Jake just, just speaking Spanish because uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm so used to him being the New York cabbie that anything else is like, oh, like he's 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 already the only one that has like a different voice, a different accent. So it's like why take that away but like, i'm willing to accept it i, I just think it's weird him being the cold blood killer you know that's a more modern take that's fine uh i did like most of the scene although it doesn't make any sense why that nurse just lets this guy walk out with harrow you know he he comes up doesn't speak english and but is telling her no no it's fine i got him and she's like okay person i don't understand what you're saying why would you let that happen? It doesn't That's true. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. Uh, and then, yeah, there's the one dead orderly. Uh, I did really like 
Khonshu being in the suit. That's from the Jeff Lemire run mm-hmm. of the comics. Uh, he he was much smaller than we've seen him before because uh, he could fit inside of a car and he's like eight feet tall. <laughs> so he had to have been shrunk down. Overall, it was a pretty cool scene. I did like it. Uh, I love the East, the Sinkovich Easter egg. I love uh, the limo. It was just cool. Yeah, uh, which is also from the Warren Ellis run. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has uh, that almost same looking car with the uh, specter license plate on it uh so let, let's cool nods to the comics yeah and i couldn't tell and again as i rewatch it again and i probably should have rewatched it before we we recorded but that scene did you happen to notice does it did it take place in london or was it somewhere else because i'm wondering if maybe the speaking spanish had something to do with i mean granted he wouldn't have any reason to speak spanish to Hero, so i guess that doesn't make sense but um i'm just trying to put two and two together yeah uh there's no uh, there's nothing that gives away where it's at uh you know they it, it's a fake hospital name you don't really see much of the city uh going off of the, the only other person you hear speak is that nurse and it sounds like she's speaking with an american accent mm-hmm. so uh, my base guess would be it's somewhere in america yeah there's uh undetermined the city somewhere in the world <laughs> yeah and that, and that's that's kind of what i got to i was not expecting the spanish which i mean I'm, I'm sure probably had a lot to do with oscar isaac some portrayal like i don't know if that was a directional decision or something that he helped to put in there or whatever because obviously he's latino so you know but yeah. um oh yeah it's guatemalan yeah guatemalan yeah so i i'm I, I don't know if that's something if they do do a season two if they're going to continue with the spanish or if they're going to you know, have him have more of a New York accent or do a mixture of both, you know, where he can yeah. you know, speak, obviously, um, which I'd be OK with, you know, if they do whatever they do. I mean, I'm I'm going to be supportive of because, I mean, again, for those that are like pissed off because, oh, this isn't the Moon Knight I'm used to from the comics. It's like, well, that's not what they're going with. It's obviously another version of Moon Knight, like kind of like every run of Moon Knight since the beginning yes. has been a totally <laughs> different take on Moon Knight. Like you get something different out of every single run. It's not the same mm-hmm. story. It's uh, probably more than almost any other, I was going to say Marvel character out there. I mean, you could start at Moon Knight issue one of any run and kind of understand what's going on for the most part. You know, yeah. you know it's not like Spider-Man where you have to have, you know, 8,000 issues of Spider-Man to understand what the hell is going on right now. <laughs> so mm-hmm. The, um, but yeah, my thoughts on the season as a whole, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I would, I really want more. And that's, that's, that's the thing that hurts the most is not knowing what's going to happen. I was really hoping like they did with Loki season two, there was some kind of like at the, during the end credits, you would either get like, you know, Moon Knight season two is coming or a Moon Knight will return. Like they'd like to do in a lot of the Marvel, you know, properties at the very, very ends. But, um, obviously yeah. we didn't get any of that. So I'm kind of I I think we will get more Moon Knight eventually. It's just going to be a while. What what do you think about that? It's so hard to tell. Uh, there's so much obfusc- obfuscation and like misdirection that happens with the entertainment industry these days. Because like Oscar Isaac has said, he was only contracted for the one season. He did say he'd be open to returning uh, if they had the right story. So I there's definitely a possibility, but. It's just too early in the game to tell. And I do think it did well enough to warrant them coming back to it. But then they have to decide if they want to pay Oscar Isaac whatever like astronomical sum he's going to ask for. Because he's like, well, I give you a hit show one time. Yeah, it's good. it's going to be hard. And, and I like I said, I hope we get something um, or at least some kind of closure on the storyline. Because I really hate – it's like if that's the way it ends, it's going to really kind of put a bad taste in my mouth. Because, it's, again, like you said, the, the blacking out scene – just showing Jake Lockley for the last five seconds of the show. And it, yeah. and that was it. It would kind of suck. I mean, I, I, I'm happy that we got Moon Knight though. I mean, at least on the screen, yeah. you know, actually a live action version of Moon Knight, which is awesome. My bigger question is like, so we, we, we do get a sense of like what is happening with like Mark and Steven afterwards. And that Kong Shu is, did not let them go. Like he said he would, but like what happened with Layla, we get zero resolution with her. Like the last time we see her is when they, uh, imprison Amit in Harrow's body, which is a cool scene. Uh, yeah, we didn't even talk about that, but that was that was yeah, a very it, cool scene. Uh, just any, anything with her, like, uh, is she still like involved with Mark and or Stephen? Uh, that's a weird menage a trois. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, who's paying for that limo? That's that's a super expensive car. Uh, 
my fiance recognized it like immediately. So like, oh, that's a BMW. That thing's got to be crazy expensive. And she looked it up. It's uh, it's a, it's a new model. It's not even actually like released yet. It's a it's an upcoming like prototype vehicle. Um, so who's paying for that? You know, Mark didn't. Mark seemed like he had some money squirreled away, but not like that kind of money. Um, yeah, I'm wondering Steven if they're... obviously is broke. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering if they're going like okay, because in obviously the comics, um, Stephen is obviously the one you know with money or whatever, or he's the one that kind of plays that 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 role. But um, I'm wondering if they're going back and making Jake the one with the money for whatever reason, because he's doing like hit jobs and and stuff like that. I'm yeah. wondering if they're kind of maybe changing the origin a little bit just to kind of fit with the Jake Luckley persona. I don't know. I, that was a good call, yeah. though. I didn't think about that of like, well, how the hell would he afford a, uh, like you said, a limo? <laughs> so, yeah. Do you have any more thoughts on the season of Moon Knight as a whole, Jared, or, or this episode? Uh, the, the only thing I didn't get to complain about was the. Uh the council of avatars they were fucking useless they were that that whole thing made me so mad because a couple episodes they just immediately dismiss Conchu and steven you know they bring harrow in there harrow is smug as shit and they just decide to listen to him for no reason (laughs) uh and then oh look he's doing exactly the thing that he was accused of doing and he didn't show any proof or anything that he wasn't doing it you just listen to him like bullshit his way out of a situation uh and then they all died fuck them whatever they (laughs) suck well what's funny is i think you brought that up in a previous episode we were discussing that about how useless they were and how they just kind of trusted hero like oh whatever he hasn't done anything wrong and then yeah now it's like oh well crap we should have probably thought about that a little bit better i'm like yeah they are pretty useless but um that's funny (laughs) that you bring that up my my original thought was that like oh maybe they're actually secretly working with hero because then it would at least make that make sense no, they're just useless. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they're not very good gods, or they just don't really care. I don't know. That, that, that's the issue. And yeah, there's a lot of yeah. unanswered questions. That's, that's again, like I said, with it being such a short series and them trying to introduce a new property to the MCU and everything, it just makes it very, very rushed, it felt like. But, I mean, for what I got, I liked it. That's why I kind of wish it was less world-building as far as the, the major threat. I felt like if they would have kind of condensed the story to make it more personal to Mark and Steven and just kind of left it at that, like just about him and maybe have a simpler villain. That's not, again, it might've been a better cohesiveness, but I mean, they're trying to go big or go home, I guess <laughs> with Moon Knight. Yeah. So, but, um, but no, as, and overall the whole, uh, the casting, love the casting of the show. I know we've talked about it. Oscar Isaac was great. Ethan Hawke was great. Um, May Callum way was great. Uh, everybody that was pretty much in the show was fantastic at, portraying those characters that they were asked to portray so i mean has nothing to do with acting i just think a lot of it had to do with just the direction of the show in general and and kind of like what they were trying to tell as a story which again that's what they were going for so it's kind of open to interpretation on what you want to complain about but um but yeah no i enjoyed it yeah overall i did too um you know i like we both said like any moon night's better than no moon night so i was probably going to be happy with whatever it was uh and sure, there's some minor quibbles, but overall, I don't think it's a show that should be missed. Like, I think everyone should go and check it out. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely worth it. I think, too, being able to actually, like, um, Christina, just, just to kind of a side note, she just told me a girl at her work out of the blue was like, oh, my gosh, are you watching Moon Knight? So the fact that mm-hmm. Moon Knight is, like, in the <laughs> the the limelight now, like, like everybody, you could ask in a casual fan, like, probably of like hey have you seen moon knight they know what moon knight is or who moon knight is which is just it's cool i mean for years everybody's you know you talk about moon knight i don't know who moon knight is or he's kind of like known as like the redheaded stepchild of marvel like oh yeah moon knight's out doing whatever he's doing and yet Mm -hmm. his comics for the most part have been very good i mean and very well written very the art's amazing like everything um about moon knight has been great but it's just trying to get him into the main spotlight and i think the show has gotten him to at least that level where People are interested. I've had more people texting me, uh, tweeting to me, <laughs> emailing me, saying, "Hey, where do I start reading Moon Knight? Like, how? Where, where should I start? Like, I will. I really want to learn more about this character." So that's that's what I'm most happy about the show of getting Moon Knight kind of out there. Of now, it's almost to the point. Like, I'm sure you saw yesterday, they announced a Conchu statue pop, a oh yeah, a Scarlet Scarab pop, and I'm like, my God, I, I'm not going to be able to keep track of all these Moon Knight. <laughs> merchandise now man i used to be like oh cool i've got pretty much everything moon knight i can think of because 
there was mm. not that much. Now it's like, okay, that's impossible in love without going broke. But <laughs> yeah, there's so much stuff now, which is cool. Like it's a good uh, birth of objects to choose from. So right, right. Your your collection can be a little more unique now. <laughs> that is true. That's true. But yes, yeah, so thank you so much, man. Yeah, for joining me the last few weeks. Um, this episode's going to be released a little bit later, so sorry for those listening or watching the episode on YouTube. Just a lot of stuff going on, so it's been it's been hard to get everybody together and uh, a lot of work stuff going on, just personally. So, but uh, yeah, thanks, man, for joining me inside the bunker, and I will get with you some soon. Hopefully, if there's more Moon Knight, we'll get together, do some more episodes and everything. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. It's been a blast. I've you know really enjoyed the process, so. Cool, cool. Thank you. Awesome. Appreciate it, buddy.